Hello, it's Miss C or Karen, however you want to call me. Um, I'm back again with the latest Treehouse Book Club selection. This month's book is The Science of Breakable Things. And I kept calling this The Science of Unbreakable Things, and that is not correct. It is Breakable Things. And the Breakable Things refers to a number of issues in the story. Now, the main character is a girl named Natalie, and she is a middle schooler, and she's dealing with a lot because her best friend from elementary school has moved on to other friends. So Natalie has had to make new friends at this new school. Natalie also has some family problems in the form of a mother who has a serious case of depression. And no matter what she does, Natalie doesn't seem able to help her mother come out of it until she comes up with a great idea with the help of her science teacher. Now, a lot of the book is written in forms of entries into Natalie's science lab notebook, which the teacher, Mr. Neely, has everybody keeping and writing things down as he teaches them the scientific method, which I'm sure you have been learning about in school. So I'm going to read the first chapter, which is called Step One observe. This is the first step in the scientific process. Sharpen and hone your observational skills. What is going on in the world around you? Note everything you see and experience. And then it says, hashtag Mr. Neely's scientific adventure. September 5th, assignment one. Observe your surroundings. Mr. Neely just wrote our first lab book assignment on the board in his scrunched up scratchy handwriting, and he's getting all excited about this scientific process stuff. I'm not sure why he feels the need to use hashtags and spell perfectly innocent words with a Z. He spells skills, S-K-I-L-L-Z. But he's one of those teachers you don't bother questioning. He has big plans for this lab notebook. Apparently, he thinks it's important to teach students dedication to long-term projects. And this assignment is his grand solution. Basically, we're supposed to observe something that interests us and spend all year applying the scientific process to our capital Q question. Hmm, excuse me. As soon as we sat down, he passed out these dorky old composition notebooks and said, this will be your wanderings journal. You will record lab notes and assignments and document the greatest scientific journey of all time, your scientific journey. We all stared, trying to figure out if he was for real or not. He was. You'll spend this year developing your own scientific process. And it all starts with one question. That thing that sparks you to life. Mr. Neely made a weird explosion gesture with his hands. And someone in the back of the room giggled which only seemed to encourage him. By the end of the year, I'll be the one learning from you. Mr. Neely is a new teacher, so he's still all optimistic and stuff. But personally, I think this assignment's a lost cause. Last year, our English teacher, Mrs. Jackson, thought it'd be really great for us to keep journals. The only requirement, 50 pages by the end of the year, written from the heart. If you haven't guessed already, 
That just resulted in everyone writing all 50 pages the day before the journals were due. I mostly filled mine with song lyrics, copied in my biggest, sloppiest handwriting. And technically, this is supposed to be homework, but I don't see why I shouldn't get a head start. Without further ado, dearest lab notebook, I present Natalie Napoli's Scientific Observations. And there's a footnote. Only the most brilliant observations you'll ever read. Imagine you're hearing a drum roll right now. Go on, imagine it. Mr. Neely waves his arms in big circles when he talks, which makes him look like an overeager hula dancer. His white button down, bright against his dark brown skin, wrinkles as he moves. He tells us he wants us to embrace the joys of science. Michaela Menzer raises her hand. Michaela Menzer answers without being called on. She says, Science is literally the joy of my life. I am literally embracing it now. Michaela Menzer is not literally embracing anything. She's just sitting at her desk, catty corner to mine, with her hands clasped in front of her and her thick dark braid twisting over her shoulder. Michaela Menzer smells like sunscreen, which kind of makes the entire classroom smell like sunscreen. And the air in here is damp and hot. I wish Fountain Middle School had air conditioning. I wish I had enough, we had enough money for me to go to Valley Hope Middle, which does have AC. But now that mom is sick, mom is sick, dad says we need to tighten our belt a notch. And anyway, Twig's here. Even though her family can definitely afford Valley Hope, so I guess this place isn't too bad. Mr. Neely is saying my name, but I haven't been listening, so I just nod at him and give him my best, I'm embracing science, smile. Mr. Neely says, I'm glad you're having so much fun with the assignment, but making observations is supposed to be homework. Natalie, Please pay attention in class. I am paying attention. And Michaela Menzer still smells like sunscreen. On the footnote about Twig, Twig is my best friend in the entire galaxy. Okay, the rest of the chapters in the book, well, a lot of the chapters in the book have uh, names based on the scientific method, or on the assignments that Mr. Neely gives. And one of them is Battle Plans and Beetles. Um, let's see what else we've got another one. Well, then there's Operation Egg. And Operation Egg plays a big part in this book because Twig and her friends, not Twig and her friends, Natalie and her friends, are uh, going to enter the Operation Egg Contest or the, the Egg Drop Contest, and they're calling theirs Operation Egg. And if you haven't done an Egg Drop Contest before, it's when you create a contraption or a holder or some sort of protection so that a raw egg can be dropped from a height, a high place, and not break. So, as part of the activities that I have included for this book, um, there are the usual questions you can think about as you read the story. There are a couple of word puzzles, and then there are instructions on how to do your own egg drop. And those come from the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. And those will all be in the packets that we have at the library that you can pick up, or you can download them from the UCD Library webpage. 
Now, since it is March, this is our last Treehouse Book Club book. But if you check back next month on the, the library YouTube channel, um, I'm making plans to do another book-related um, set of videos, and I'm not going to reveal what they are, but uh, I will start that up next month. So I hope you enjoy the science of breakable things, not unbreakable, breakable. And as I said, I hope you enjoy it and check back next month to see what I have in store for you. Bye-bye.